Hello and welcome to National 5 Biology Unit 2 Carrier 2 Control and Communication. This video is on the second half of Control and Communication, Part B, as we're just going to be looking at hormonal control here. If you haven't already, please go back and watch the first video on this topic on the nervous system as that is a completely separate video. We're still on Unit 2 Multicellular Organisms and this is Topic 2. Once again, here's the SQA course specification or Managed Knowledge section for this topic. Remember, this is all the bits of knowledge and content that you could be tested on in a test or exam at this level. Remember, this video only covers Part B, so for Part A on the nervous system, you'll need to go and watch the separate video. As you watch, feel free to pause the video at any point or go back and rewatch sections if you need to. As we go through the theory, there'll be some questions after each part um, so that you can be sure you're ready to move on. So our learning intention today is to learn about control and communication and in particular hormonal control. Hopefully by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to name the glands which release hormones into the bloodstream, describe the function of hormones and why they only bind to specific tissues, describe the process of glucose regulation, including the roles of insulin, glucagon, glycogen, the pancreas and the liver. So in our last topic, nervous systems, we mentioned there are two types of effectors which can cause a response in the body, muscles and glands. In this topic, we're going to talk about those glands and how they cause a response to happen. So endocrine glands are special glands that release hormones into the bloodstream. If you remember back to learning about different types of proteins in Unit 1, we discussed SHARE. So structural, hormones, antibodies, receptors and enzymes. So hormones are a type of protein and they are made in endocrine glands in the body that release them into the bloodstream. At National 5, you only need to know about three endocrine glands, not all of the ones that are found in the body. So you should be able to name and label on a diagram the testes, the ovaries and the pancreas. The testes and the ovaries um, we discuss in more detail in Unit 2, Key Area 3 Reproduction, but the pancreas is the main endocrine gland we're going to discuss today, which you can see here is the long blue leaf-like shaped organ found between the kidneys in this diagram. So the hormones function is that they are chemical messengers and they travel in the bloodstream. One very important question that's often asked about hormones is why do hormones only affect certain cells or tissues? Now this makes sense as our bodies do not want all cells to respond when a hormone is released, they just want particular ones to. So this happens because the target tissues or group of cells which the body wants to respond to that particular hormone have receptor proteins on their surface which are specific to certain hormones. So the receptors on the surface have a particular shape which only binds to complementary hormones. This means if a tissue doesn't have a receptor that binds to that particular hormone, then it won't respond and this ensures that only certain target tissues are affected by particular hormones. Now you can see that in the diagram on the bottom right here. So an endocrine gland here is labelled as a secreting cell, has released a particular hormone and it's travelled through the bloodstream. Any target tissues which have a complementary receptor protein on their surface will be affected, but any of those cells which do not have a receptor protein on the surface that matches will not be affected. So let's try some quick questions on what we've covered so far to check your knowledge before we move on. So pause the video here and try the questions either by saying the answer out loud or writing them down. And when you're ready, play the video and we'll go through the answers. So question number one asks, what is the name given to the areas of the body that release hormones? These are called endocrine glands. Question two asks you to give three examples of these. So at National 5, the three examples you need to know are the ovaries, testes and pancreas. Question three asked, how do hormones travel around the body? The answer is in the bloodstream. Number four asked, what is the name given to the tissue they will have an effect on or interact with? That would be the target tissues. And then explain why these hormones only have an effect on these tissues and not others. Well, the answer for this would be that those target tissues have receptor proteins, which are complementary to the specific hormones. So only that tissue will be affected by those hormones. So the main part of this topic is actually learning about blood glucose regulation. By the end of the section, you need to know the roles of insulin, glucagon, glycogen, the pancreas and the liver. So we have discussed glucose previously when we covered respiration. Glucose is a type of sugar, so a carbohydrate, which cells use in respiration to produce energy. However, it's actually a problem for the body if there's too much glucose in the bloodstream. It causes a lot of harmful effects, but you do not need to know the specifics of those. So your body at all times must keep its blood glucose levels at a certain level. 
So we're going to look at how the body responds if the blood glucose levels go above or below this normal level and how the body reacts to be able to bring it back to normal by using hormones. Now, before we move on, I just want to mention diabetes. So diabetes is an illness where the person has high blood glucose um, levels and has issues either with producing or responding to an important hormone called insulin. Diabetics usually take insulin after they eat to bring down the level of their blood glucose back to normal. And you'll basically see why this is as we go through the next example. So I feel the best possible way to try and learn this because it's quite a difficult concept um, is through using a large diagram. So we're going to start by looking at how the body responds to an increase in blood glucose levels and how it brings it back to normal. So your blood glucose will increase if you when you eat, as your body will break down the carbohydrates that you're taking in through your small intestine um, and it puts your blood glucose into your blood. Now we're going to come back to absorption of glucose in the small intestine later near the end of unit two as a separate topic. So after a meal, your blood glucose levels will increase. This is detected by an organ called the pancreas. The pancreas is an endocrine gland, meaning that it can produce hormones that will get released into the bloodstream. So when the pancreas detects this increase in blood glucose levels, it releases a hormone called insulin. This insulin then travels in the bloodstream to the liver, which is the target tissue for insulin. So as we discussed before, as the liver is the target tissue, the liver cells will have receptors on their surface, which is complementary to the hormone insulin. The liver then uses its own enzymes to take the extra glucose that's in the blood and convert it into something called glycogen. Glycogen is a storage carbohydrate that's found in the liver. It's made up of lots of glucose molecules joined together. And because the liver makes this and stores it, the blood glucose levels can be brought down back to normal. And eventually they'll get to this point where they're back to normal again and the insulin can stop being produced. One important thing to point out here is that the insulin does not convert the glucose into glycogen. It's a really common mistake. Insulin is a hormone, not an enzyme. So it's the liver's own enzymes that do that job. The insulin just tells, it's a chemical messenger that just tells the liver to do it. So if I was to put this into clear steps, like I would in an extended response answer, I would say after a meal, blood glucose levels increase. This is detected by cells in the pancreas. Remember the pancreas is an endocrine gland. The pancreas releases a hormone called insulin into the bloodstream. Insulin travels to the liver, which is our target tissue, and binds to receptors. The liver uses enzymes to convert the glucose into glycogen, and this will return the blood glucose level back to normal. So let's try some quick questions on what we've covered so far to check your knowledge before we move on. So pause the video here and try these questions, either by saying the answer out loud or writing them down. And when you're ready, play the video and we'll go through the answers. So question number one asks, when blood glucose levels increase, which endocrine gland in the body detects this change? It's the pancreas. Question two asks to state the hormone this endocrine gland releases in response to the change is insulin. Three told you to name the organ this hormone travels to. It's the liver. Four asks, what does this hormone stimulate the organ to do? It's to stimulate the liver enzymes to convert glucose into glycogen. And what is the overall effect of this process? And this is the part that a lot of people forget when they're doing an extended response. It's to bring the blood glucose levels back to normal. So now we're going to look at what happens when the blood glucose levels increase to, now we've had a look at what happens when they increase too high above normal. We're basically going to switch around and we're going to look at how the body responds when they go too low. So an example of when this would happen is after exercise, as the body would have broken down a lot of glucose through respiration. In this case, there would be a decrease in the blood glucose levels, and this again would be detected by the pancreas. Remember, the pancreas is an endocrine gland which releases hormones, but this doesn't mean it releases just insulin. The pancreas can actually release a different hormone depending on whether the blood glucose levels are too high or too low. So when the pancreas detects the blood glucose levels have decreased, they're now too low, it will actually stop releasing insulin, and instead of releasing insulin, it will release glucagon. So the way to remember this is when glucose is gone, the pancreas releases glucagon. So glucagon is a hormone which is released by the pancreas and travels in the blood to the liver as well. The liver is glucagon's target tissue, so the liver will also have receptors which are complementary to glucagon on the cell surface. When the glucagon binds to the liver, it tells it to take the glycogen that it's stored and use its enzymes to convert or break this glycogen down into glucose and release it back into the bloodstream to bring the levels back to normal again. So eventually the blood glucose levels will return to normal. 
So again, if I was to put this into clear steps, like I would in an extended response question, after something like exercise, the blood glucose levels would decrease. This is detected by cells in the pancreas, which again is an endocrine gland. The pancreas releases the hormone glucagon, because glucose is gone, so we release glucagon into the bloodstream. This then travels to the liver, which is the target tissue, and basically the glucagon binds the receptors on the liver, which will then tell the liver to use its enzymes to convert glycogen into glucose. That glucose is then released into the blood, and that brings the blood glucose levels to normal. So let's try some more quick questions on what we've covered so far to check our knowledge before we move on. So again, pause the video here, try the questions, and when you're ready, play the video and we'll go through the answers. So when blood glucose levels decrease, which endocrine bond gland in the body detects this change is the same gland as before as the pancreas. State the hormone this endocrine gland releases in response to the change is glucagon. Name the organ this hormone travels to. Again, it's the same as before, it's the liver. What does this hormone stimulate the organ to do? Well, it stimulates the liver to get enzymes to convert the glycogen into glucose. And what's the overall effect again? Well, it will bring the blood glucose levels back to normal. So another way to help you remember this, especially the difference between glucagon and glycogen, is by using a song like this one. So low blood sugar, glucose gone. What you need is glucagon. Turn glucose into glycogen. What you need is insulin. So this will help you because if you remember if it's low or decreased blood sugar, then it means that glucagon is released. And you'll just remember the opposite would be insulin. And turn glucose into glycogen is insulin, so it must be glucagon that goes the other way, from glycogen to glucose. This is another summary I think helps. Um, it's really, really important that you spell glucose, glucagon and glycogen correctly, and that you don't mix them up, as they are all completely different things. So this diagram shows that insulin is the hormone which converts um, glucose into glycogen, and glucagon is the hormone which converts glycogen into glucose. Um, now remember, these are just hormones, so they tell the liver to do the converting, but remember they don't convert themselves, it'll be enzymes in the liver that do that. So this is a big one-page summary of all the glucose regulation stuff together. I find this is the easiest way to remember this process, as it shows the areas of similarity, so that the pancreas is always the one that detects the change, and is an endocrine gland that releases hormones, the target tissue is always the liver, and the ultimate goal is to bring the blood glucose levels back to normal. But you can also see the differences in terms of what's happened at the start of the glucose level in terms of increase or decrease, the exact hormone that's released in response, and how the liver responds to each. These are the differences. I would learn this off by heart by drawing it out multiple times from memory, and if you find the topic really difficult, Learn it, draw it as soon as you get into your test or exam, as soon as you're allowed to, and then it means you'll always have it to refer back to because I can guarantee there will be questions on this. So let's try a final quick set of questions on what we've covered. Pause the video, try the questions, and play when you're ready to go through the answers. Remember this last one for number three is a three mark question, so it will need to be a bit of a longer answer that you give. So name two hormones released by the pancreas insulin and glucagon. What is the name of the storage carbohydrate that's found in the liver? That's glycogen. Explain what happens when the pancreas releases insulin. This could also say releases glucagon, it'd be a slightly different answer. So if it releases insulin, we're starting halfway through, so we're not talking about the fact that the blood glucose has increased. Insulin will travel in the bloodstream to the liver, for one mark. The liver will take glucose from the blood and convert it into glycogen using its enzymes. And the last mark would be for saying that the blood glucose levels would return to normal. So that's us finished learning about the part that hormones play in control of communication. I hope that you can now name the glands which release hormones into the bloodstream, describe the function of hormones and why they only bind to specific tissues, and describe the process of glucose regulation, including the roles of insulin, glucagon, glycogen, the pancreas and the liver. Please, please feel free to go back and watch parts of the video again in the future if you need a refresher on any parts of this topic. Thank you once again for listening.